The nine mighty names of God mentioned in the Bible, number one, Yahweh. Names signify identity and often tell a story in the sacred pages of the Bible. Names are not just casual labels. They are profound revelations. They echo the character and nature of their bearers regarding God. Each name unveils a dim mention of the divine, a glimpse into the infinity of the almighty Yahweh, a name so sacred that for centuries the people of Israel would not even speak it aloud. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I have sent me to you. Exodus 3 verse 14. Yahweh is God's name signifying eternal presence, the one who is self-existent, self-sufficient and ever-present in the heart of the wilderness. There was a mountain named Horeb, often called the Mountain of God. It was here that a curious sight caught the attention of Moses, a bush that was blazing with fire but not consumed. As Moses drew near to this sight, the voice of God spoke from within the bush, calling him by name. God heard the cries of his people in Egypt, and he was ready to deliver them. But Moses had questions among them. One stood out when he would go to the Israelites. Who should he say sent him? God's answer to Moses was profound and mysterious, a declaration of his eternal essence. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I have sent me to you, Exodus 3 verse 14, New International Version. This name I am who I am revealed in Hebrew as Yahweh is rich with meaning. It's like God was saying he is the one who always has been and always will be unlike everything else Moses had ever known. God had no beginning and would have no end. He simply exists and his existence depends on nothing else. The name Yahweh, then, is not just a name, it's a statement of reality that God is alive, always present, never changing, no matter what the people of Israel had gone through or would face, God would be with them. This was of great importance because it meant their God was not like the gods of Egypt, who were represented by idols or elements of nature that change and fade away. Yahweh was different. He was real, he was alive, and he was eternal, God's self-given name. I am also reassured Moses and the Israelites of his unchanging character. He had been with their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he would be with them. His promises were sure because he is constant, and his word is unbreakable, therefore. Whenever the Israelites called on the name of Yahweh, they were not just calling on distant deity, but on the ever-present, all-powerful God who had pledged himself to be their God forever. This is the majestic and profound story behind the name Yahweh is revealed in the Bible. Number 2. Elohim Consider the name Elohim found in the beginning of the Bible. In the beginning, God Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. It's a name that paints the picture of God's power and might his role as the supreme creator of all Elohim majestic and plural in form, yet singular in action reflects a God of complexity and unity, a hint of the mysterious trinity. The story of God's name Elohim in the Bible weaves together the divine with the tangible reality of creation. When we step into the opening scene of the Bible, we are greeted with a powerful statement that sets the tone for everything that follows. Genesis 1 verse 1 tells us in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. This is our first encounter with the name Elohim and it's packed with meaning. The word Elohim is remarkable because it's both majestic and mysterious. It's a Hebrew word that can be translated as strong one or divine. This name isn't just a title, it's a description of God's nature and character. When we hear Elohim, we are meant to understand that God is not just strong, but the epitome of strength and the very essence of divinity. But why does this matter? The importance of this name is found in what it signifies about God's relationship with the world by calling God Elohim the Bible is telling us that God is not only supremely powerful, but also sovereign over all of creation. This isn't a distant abstract power. It's a personal force that shaped the mountains, carved out the valleys, filled the oceans and breathed life into humanity. As the story of creation unfolds in Genesis, we see Elohim in action. Genesis 1 verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light, the phrase. And God said, Repeats like a drumbeat. Throughout the chapter, reminding us that Elohim is commanding the universe into existence with just words that sovereignty on display, the kind of authority that speaks and it happens every time. Elohim creates something in Genesis 1. It's followed by the affirmation that it was good. 
This isn't just about cool quitty, it's about purpose. Everything Elohim creates is designed to reflect and declare his glory and power from the smallest insect to the grandest galaxy. All of creation is a canvas that Elohim has painted with his divine brush. When we look around at the world, every part of creation, whispers or sometimes shouts the name Elohim, the mountains rise up like monuments to his strength. The sky is like a display of his divinity, and every human being carries the breath of Elohim, a testament to the intimate touch of the Creator. In simple terms, the name Elohim is our reminder that there's no corner of the universe. Untouched by God's handiwork, it tells us that the same God who shaped the UN universe is involved in the details of our lives when life feels chaotic or out of control. Remembering God as Elohim can be a source of comfort and confidence. So as the Bible begins with in the beginning, Elohim, it invites us into a story where God is not a passive observer, but the active, powerful and sovereign creator. It's a story that continues throughout the Bible and in the lives of believers today where Elohim is still creating, still sustaining and still revealing his power and divine nature in countless ways. Number three, El Shay, the name El Shai is traditionally understood as God, the all sufficient one. This name is a combination of El, which means God in Hebrew, and Shay, a word whose exact meaning is debated by scholars, but is often seen as conveying sufficiency, power and nurturing like a mother who nourishes her child. We first encounter this name in Genesis 9 verse 18 where the text tells us, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, El Shaddai, walk before me faithfully and be blameless here. God is establishing his covenant with Abraham, whom he later renames Abraham, promising that he will be the father of many nations. The timing of this revelation is crucial. Abraham is old and his wife Sarah is well past childbearing age. The promise of a child seems impossible by human standards, but God introduces himself as El Shay to underscore that he is not limited by human constraints. He is sufficient in himself to fulfill promises that seem impossible. The importance of God revealing himself as Al Shay to Abraham cannot be overstated. It emphasizes God's unlimited might and ability to do what he promises regardless of any apparent obstacle. It reassures Abraham that God is more than enough to accomplish the extraordinary, ensuring that his covenant will be established throughout the Bible. The notion of God as a lie serves as a reminder to people in various situations that they can rely on God's all-sufficiency, whether it is in times of need, moments of doubt, or situations where the odds seem unachievable. The name Eli speaks to the mighty power and nurturing character of God, who provides for and sustains his people in times of scarcity or uncertainty. Remembering God as El Shay has given believers comfort and strength, reinforcing the idea that when they have God, they have everything they need. It's a concept that encourages faith not in one's own ability, but in God's power to work through and beyond human limitations. The revelation to Abraham becomes a cornerstone for the faith of many generations. It's a declaration that no matter the circumstances, God's presence and provision are sufficient to meet all needs. When God says, I am El Shay, he is in essence saying, I am enough. And for countless people across ages and through trials, this has been a source of enduring hope and unshakable confidence. Number four, Adonai. The name Adonai emerges with honor and significance. This title for God's translating to master or owner is more than an identifier. It is a window into the dynamic and inspiring relationship. Between the creator and his creation, imagine a world where every sunrise and sunset, every mountain peak and ocean depth resonate with the echo of a majestic name. This is the world where the name Adonai is said quietly and loudly with the same strong feeling. Let us take a stroll through Psalm 8 verse 11, where the psalmist exclaims in adoration, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Here the psalmist uses two distinct names for God. The first Lord is in all capital letters, which in our English translation stands for Yahweh, the sacred and unspoken name of God signifying his eternal and self, existent nature. The second Lord is Adonai. Reflecting our personal recognition of God's authority over us, the importance of Adonai can be likened to the relationship between a devoted servant and a benevolent master. In the times when the Bible was written, 
A servant would look to their master for provision, protection, and guidance. The master in turn would care for and rule all over the servants with kindness and justice. When we call God Adonai, we are acknowledging that He is our ultimate authority, the one who provides for us, protects us, and guides our paths as subjects or servants of God. The name Adonai reminds us of our place in the grand design. We are not aimless wanderers on the earth, but rather cherished creations. Under the loving rule of the master of the universe, the book of Isaiah reminds us of this when it says, But now, O Lord Adonai, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Isaiah 14, verse 51, the recognition of God as Adonai also carries with it a sense of comfort and security. It is knowing that we belong to someone greater than ourselves who holds the world in his hands. We see this sentiment echoed in the book of Genesis, when Abraham speaks to God as Adonai before daring to intercede for the city of Sodom. Genesis 18.30 calling God, Adonai humbles us, yet it also elevates us, for it is a name that by s us to the divine purpose and care, it teaches us that our every action, every decision should be made in the light of His dominion and with the aim to serve and glorify Him who is the rightful owner of all things. In essence, Adonai is not just a name but a declaration of our faith, a statement of our loyalty and a pledge of our love to the One who, who in His majesty, claims both the highest heavens and the human heart as His dwelling place. Number 5. Jehovah Gira, the story behind the name Jehovah Gira, which translates to the Lord will provide, comes from a very dramatic and powerful moment in the Bible. Let's explore this further. Jehovah Gira can be understood as the Lord who sees or the Lord who will see to it. This is deeply significant because it suggests that God is not only aware of our needs, but also actively works to meet them at just the right time. The story is found in Genesis 22. God has asked Abraham to do something extraordinary and deeply distressing, to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham shows that he, he is willing to trust God completely, and he takes Isaac to the mountain that God had told him about as they were going. Isaac said to his father, The fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answers in faith, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. My son, Genesis 22, verse 7 to 8, when they arrived at the place that God had told him about. Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood. He then bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. As Abraham raised his knife to slay his son, an angel of the Lord called out from the heaven, Abraham, Abraham, do not lay a hand on the boy. The angel said, do not do anything to him now. I know that you fear God because you have not withheld me from your son, your only son, Genesis 22, verses 11 to 12. Just then, Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. He took the ram and offered it as a sacrifice instead of his son. This is where Abraham called the place Jehovah Gira, as it is said on the mountain of the Lord. It will be provided Genesis 22, verse 14, New International Version. This name of God, Jehovah Gira, is important for believers because it reminds them that God is always watching and will provide what is needed at the right time. It's not just about physical needs, but also spiritual and emotional ones. This event showed us that God would ultimately provide Jesus, the Lamb of God, to be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of humanity. Something Abraham's situation pointed towards God sees our deepest needs and has already provided the solution through Jesus Christ. This name, Jehovah Gira, is an assurance for people of faith that they are not alone. 1914 in their struggles or needs, it holds the promise that God is attentive to the cries of His people and will ensure that their needs are met according to His perfect plan and timing in times of need. We find refuge in Jehovah Gira the Lord who provides. When Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the ram caught in the thicket, he understood this name deeply, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Gira. As it is said to this day in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen, Genesis 22 verse 14. It's a name that reassures us of God's provision, even before we perceive our need in the throes of battle the Israelites rallied under the banner of Jehovah Nisi the Lord. Our banner Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. 
Exodus 17 verse 15. This name proclaims God's leadership and the victory that comes from being under His standard in our moments of profound loneliness and despair. We are comforted by Elroy the God who sees me. Hagar, a servant on the run, encountered God in the wilderness and declared, Thou God sees me. Genesis 20 verse 42. It's a name that tells us we are never invisible to God. He sees our plight and cares, and in the New Testament we encounter Emmanuel God. With us, the Gospel of Matthew quotes the prophet Isaiah the Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel Matthew 123. It's a name that brings God from the cosmos into our very existence, the divine walking alongside humanity. These names and many more from a mosaic of God's identity as revealed in the Bible they invite us not just to speak of God, but to speak with Him, to know Him, and to experience His presence in the multifaceted situations of our lives. Each name of God is a promise, a presence, a power waiting to be explored, understood, and relied upon. The mighty names of God are not just ancient words. They are ever-reliant truths, boning us to discover the depths of the one to whom they belong. Number six, Jehovah Rapha, among the many names of God. One that stands out is Jehovah Rapha, which translates to the Lord, our healer. This title is not just a name, it is a promise, a testament to God's character and a window into his compassionate heart. The story behind this powerful name is found in Exodus 15, 26. A passage where the Israelites are at a critical time in their journey. They had just experienced the miraculous as they crossed the Red Sea where the walls of water stood as a guide to their passage, while their Egyptian pursuers were swallowed by the collapsing sea depths. The excitement of being rescued soon wears off when they start dealing with the challenge of the desert ahead. The desert was a tough place. The Israelite people were very thirsty and tired when they found some water at the land of Mara, but the water was too bitter to drink. They started complaining to Moses, their leader. They were upset and missed the good things they had in Egypt. Even though they were not free there, they were feeling very hopeless. Then God told Moses to put a piece of wood into the water. When he did that, the water turned good and they could drink it. This miracle serves as more than just a physical remedy for thirst. It is a teaching moment, one where God reveals his nature as Jehovah Rapha. God speaks to them saying, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Exodus 15 verse 26. In this declaration, God is doing more than promising to keep them free from diseases. He is inviting them into a relationship where obedience brings holistic healing. The importance of this name, Jehovah Rapha, cannot be overstated. It is not just about the healing of the body from ailments or the restoration of bitter waters. It is about God's day desire and his ability to heal physically, emotionally, and spiritually for the Israelites. This name was like soothing medicine for their hearts, giving them something to hope for while they dealt with the unknowns of the desert. For us now, it's still a deep promise when we talk about God as Jehovah Rapha. We are saying he is the one who can heal us completely in our pain, in our illness, in our heartache, and in our spiritual struggles. We can go to him knowing that he cares about what we are going through. The essence of Jehovah Rapha touches on the very heart of the gospel message that would come to reality through Jesus Christ in the New Testament. We see Jesus healing the sick, comforting the sorrowful, and offering forgiveness for sins, manifesting God's healing in a tangible way. Therefore, when we encounter this name Jehovah Rapha, we are encountering the very heart of God who is intimately concerned with our well-being. It is a reminder that in every season of pain or trial, we are not abandoned. God is present, willing to restore and heal, beckoning us to trust in Him, our healer, our peace, our Jehovah Rapher, number seven, Jehovah Shalom in the Bible, names are more than just a means of identification. They are a reflection of character and relationship. One such name of God is Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord, our peace. This name has a profound story behind it found in the book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 24. During the period when Israel was being bullied by the Midianites, a man named Gideon was chosen by God to be Israel's leader. 
Gideon, who didn't think he was strong or important, especially in his own family, got a surprised visit from an angel from God. This appeared when Israel was really hoping for someone to rescue them from their enemies who were destroying their farms and making everyone poor and miserable, while Gideon was secret El beating out wheat in a spot where he hoped the Midianites wouldn't find him. God's messenger came to him and called him a brave fighter, telling him that God was by his side. Gideon was surprised and asked why bad things were still happening if God was with them. He didn't believe he was strong enough to rescue Israel from trouble. But God told Gideon not to worry, promising to stay with him through it all. However, ever Gideon asked for a sign to confirm that it was indeed the Lord speaking with him, after presenting an offering to the Lord, Gideon witnessed a miraculous sign when the angel touched the offering with the tip of his staff, and fire rose from the rock and consumed the meat and bread. Then the angel of the Lord disappeared, overwhelmed by the reality that he had just seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Gideon feared for his life because it was believed that no one could see God and live, but the Lord said to him, Peace does not be afraid, you are not going to die. Judges 6 verse 23. It was after this encounter that Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom, saying the Lord is peace, Judges 6 verse 24. Right then, even with all the confusion and the upcoming fight, Gideon fell to deep peace and confidence. Because of God's presence, he understood that the God of Israel is strong and powerful, but also brings peace. The importance of the name Jehovah Shalom lies in the fact that it emphasizes God's ability to provide peace that surpasses all understanding in the midst of fears, war wars, and personal doubts. God revealed himself as the source of peace. This peace is not as the world gives temporary and circumstantial, but is a divine peace, a lasting peace and confidence that comes from knowing who God is, is about trusting God's control over everything, even when things are tough or when we feel upset. The Apostle Paul later echoes this in the New Testament, when he writes to the Philippians, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus Philippians 4. 7. New International Version Thus, Jehovah Shalom is not only a name but a promise, a testament to God's enduring presence and His unwavering commitment to be our peace, even in the midst of life's most challenging ing storms. It is a reminder that when we call upon the Lord, He is able to calm our fears, provide reassurance, and secure our hearts in His perfect peace. Number 8. Jehovah Nisi in the journey of the Israelites through the desert There's a moment where the true meaning of Jehovah Nisi comes to life vividly, showcasing the power and protection God provides for His people. This name of God, Jehovah Nisi, can be translated as, The Lord is my banner. It speaks of God being a sign of victory and a source of protection like a flag that leads an army into battle. The backdrop to this powerful name is found in Exodus 17. Here the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness after God led them out of slavery in Egypt as they travel. They face various hardships, including the lack of water and constant threats from other people in Exodus 17. 8 to 16, the Israelites encounter a new challenge. They are attacked by the Amalekites, a fierce group of desert warriors. Moses, the leader of the Israelites, knows that this battle is not just physical, but also spiritual. He instructs Joshua to choose some men to go and fight the Amalekites. Meanwhile, Moses, along with Aaron and Hur, goes to the top of the hill with the staff of God in his hands. As the battle goes on below, something miraculous happens as long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning Exodus 17 verse 1. Moses' hands grew tired, so Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on, and they stood on both sides holding his hands up with their support. His hands remained steady until sunset and Joshua overcomes the Amalekite army. After this incredible victory, Moses built an altar and names its Jehovah Nisi, he says, because hands were lifted up to the throne of the Lord. The Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation, Exodus 17 verse 16 calling. The altar Jehovah Nisi means a lot. It's not only to remember winning a battle, it's to show that God helped them win. Moses knew that God was the one who helped them beat their enemies. The altar stood for God always being there to protect and help his people. The name Jehovah Nisi is like a flag of faith instead of cloth. It tells us that in every fight, God leads the way and gives us power. 
It's a reminder that when we come up against our own tough challenges, whatever they are, God is the one we unite under. To win the importance of Jehovah Nisi lies in the understanding that God's protection is not passive. He actively engages, is in the battles we face, ensuring that with Him as our banner, we have a rallying point and a sure victory. It's a reminder that we don't fight alone, and it is under His banner that we find refuge and strength. The story of Jehovah Nisi continues to inspire believers that when they face overwhelming challenges, they can look to God as their miraculous sign of victory and defense number nine. El El, Elon, there is a name that stands high and resounding with authority. El Elon, which translates to God Most High. This title is not just a name, it is a proclamation of God's unrivaled position of strength and power in the heavens and the earth. The backdrop to the story of Il Elon unfolds in the book of Genesis, where we, Eng Eon, counter a mysterious and opal figure named Melchizedek, this enigmatic king of Salem, which would later be known as Jerusalem and priest of the highest God, appears suddenly in the narrative of Abraham's life. After Abraham's victorious return from defeating Cador Lor and his allies, Melchizedek greets him with bread and wine. It is in this moment of blessing that Melchizedek invokes the name of Il Elon in Genesis 14 verse 18 to 23. The scripture tells us, And Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God, most high possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Here El Elon is celebrated as the possessor of heaven and earth the sovereign over all creation and the divine deliverer who grants victory. The importance of El Elon in the Bible can hardly be overstated. This name elevates God above all other so-called gods and powers. It speaks of his supreme authority and sovereignty, asserting that there is none above him to be called the highest God, is to acknowledge that God holds the highest office, the ultimate authority and his dominion is above all nations, peoples and their earthly gods. He is the one who is above all things from whom blessings flow and to whom victory in battle is ultimately attributed when MDC blessed Abraham and called God El Elon. He was doing more than just a blessing. He was saying that Abraham didn't win by himself. It was God's greatest power that made it happen. This shows us that Abraham's win is part of the big story of how God helps people. It tells us that the good things that happen to us aren't just because of what we do. They come from the help of God, who is above all the name El Elyon shows us that God is the highest ruler above everything else. The Bible tells us this name to show us God's total power and how closely he looks after everything he made. This name makes us respect and stand in wonder of God, and it gives peace to those who really get what it means because if God is the top boss, we don't have to be scared of anything when we are under his care. In summary, these names not only signify various attributes and characteristics of God, but also demonstrate how he interacts with his creation, especially humanity. They serve as reminders of his power, love, provision, and authority in our lives. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, in the beauty of your many names. We find strength, comfort, and hope you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And so we come to you now seeking provision in every area of our lives where there is lack. Bring abundance where there is want. Fill us with your presence, Lord. You are Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and by your stripes we are healed. Touch the bodies, minds, and spirits of those crying out for your healing power. Mend the broken, restore the weary, and release the chains of illness in the mighty name of Jesus God. You are Jehovah Nisei, our banner in the battles we face. May we always remember that the victory is yours. Give us the courage to stand firm, the wisdom to see your strategy, and the patience to await your timing. You are also El Shea God Almighty, the All-Sufficient One. We lack nothing when we are in your embrace. Please fill the voids that this world cannot satisfy and remind us that our sufficiency is found solely in you as Jehovah Shalom, our peace. We ask you to calm the storms in our lives in a world filled with turmoil. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And as we call on you, Elroy, the God who sees remind us that no aspect of our lives is hidden from your compassionate gaze. Comfort those who feel forgotten, knowing that you see them, you know them, and you love them. 
We thank you, Father, for the intimacy of your love that we may call you Daddy, and rest in the assurance of your care and affection in the precious and powerful name of Jesus, the name above all names. We lift these prayers. Amen.